Watch your thoughts, they become words. Watch your words, they become actions. Watch your actions, they become habits. Watch your habits, they become character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Belt? Here. Boren? Here. Carlson? Here. Decker? Here. Hammond? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Koth? Here. Kittleson? Here. Matichuk? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Raisler? Here. Samson? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. And Bercy? Here. 16 present. We have a quorum now if we can all jo join Alderman Carlson in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Daryl. Looking for approval of the minutes of the former prior Common Council meeting. President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mayor. I move that we approve the previous minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes under discussion. There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resignations, Attorney McLean. Your Honor, uh, Mayor received a letter dated uh, May 15th from Brian Van Dusky advising that uh, you need to resign from the Transit Commission on the basis that uh, he's gotten a new position in Michigan and will be uh, relocating. Thank you, Steve. Motion to accept and file? Move to accept and file the resignation. Second. Motion and a second to accept and file under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Todd Wolf to be considered for appointment to the Sheboygan Transit Commission to fill the unexpired term of Brian Vandusky, whose term expires 4-30-2013, signed by the mayor. That lies over until the next Common Council meeting. That is all four appointments. Do we have public forum this evening? Uh, yes, we do. Uh, this evening, first on the list would be Joanne Scribner. <clears throat> and Joanne, can I have your home address, please? Right, and you will have five minutes. First, I'd like to thank you, Ryan, for the Council for the opportunity yeah, to be tonight. I can't hear I would also like the to mic congratulate Joanne, Joanne, can you, hold, can you hold, hold on, on just, just a, a second. Your, I don't think your mic is on. Hold on. Check the other mic. Plugged in. It's not plugged in. <laughs> Bob, try that now. Try it now. Yeah, try it. The light. Works right in front of this. <laughs> in the front of the thing, right there. Don't do. Uh, right in front of your name tag. Here right below your name tag. Here we go. Election video right here. Hope somebody, hope somebody doesn't file a grievance. We must testing, testing. There we go. Now I do get my five minutes still, don't I? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Two minutes is set up. Yeah. <laughs> hold on, let me reset for you, Joanne. There you go. Wait. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank Mayor Ryan and the Schwedin Common Council for giving me the opportunity to speak here at Public Forum tonight. I would also like to congratulate Eric Rindfleisch on his win again for the 5th District Alderman seat in the election on April 5th. So congratulations, Eric. Uh, and are you up for another rematch in, in two years? Long time. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Okay, game on. I would also like to congratulate all the new aldermen who won their races on April 5th and also the outgoing aldermen who did a great job at being the aldermen in their districts. And for this new, and uh, those of you who didn't have a race to have to go through this year, for the current Shawin Common Council, keep up the good work, good luck, a lot of um, tough issues to have to work out. 
Now, as for the smoking room issue, that's what I'm here to talk about tonight, that the Sheboygan taverns are now required to have, all, actually all state taverns, I guess, in Wisconsin. Um, I'm with Emily Deringer of the Coalition uh, Lakeshore Tobacco Prevention Network of Oshkosh. And uh, in the uh, opinion page, letter to the editor section of the Sheboygan Press, Friday, May 27, which you probably or perhaps read, uh, her, the title is Clearing the Air Over Smoking Rooms. The city of Sheboygan's smoke-free ordinance is one of a handful of municipalities being challenged by the Tavern League because the city's definition of enclosed space and substantial wall are different than the state's. City officials took steps to make the law easier to understand and enforce in June 2010 when the Common Council adopted language suggested by the Department of Commerce. It is important to remember that the most important reason this law went into effect was to protect workers and the public from exposure to secondhand smoke. It is also important to note that nowhere in the state law does it say that smoking rooms are okay. The technicalities come into play when someone tries to define where you can smoke by reading language that explains where you cannot smoke. I totally agree that several of the definitions in the state law are confusing. But the point is that smoking should be done outside. Public health does not want to say you can smoke in here because we do not want smoking in anywhere. Recently, uh, Emily says she accompanied a Sheboygan police officer, city attorney, and two building inspectors on visits to 10 different establishments that all had smoking rooms. Only two had enough open air space in the walls to meet the city's definition of enclosed space, therefore being able to allow smoking. The other eight failed compliance with the city's ordinance and state law. We gave tavern owners clear answers about what was allowable and what was not, and answered questions that they had. I realized that our answers might not have been what they wanted to hear, and that they are frustrated about spending thousands of dollars and countless hours building their smoking rooms. We are just there to help them comply with the law or ordinance, whatever that is going to be. And I realized that Sheboygan's ordinance is stricter than the state ordinance, so I guess that would be where the confusion would lie as far as the Sheboygan taverns. Uh, I really like being able to go into public areas, restaurants, the occasional bar, and have no smoke. It's great. No secondhand smoke. Um, it's much healthier, obviously. We all know that smoking can and probably does cause lung cancer. The Surgeon General has a warning on each and every pack of cigarettes and carton that is sold. So it's obviously a health hazard. Wolves travel in packs. If they're hungry enough and if you're in their neck of the woods, they can kill you and have you for lunch. Cigarettes also travel in packs. They can kill you. I know it's a choice. I know the owners have a choice. And for any of you kids that are out, out there in TV land watching this tonight or the next time it's going to be shown, don't start smoking. It is not cool. It actually can kill you, this overuse, use at all, of nicotine. Um, it's not cool. Not everybody is doing it. And um, smoking can kill people. So you tavern owners in Sheboygan do the right thing. It might be, um, at least you have to abide by state law, and I would suggest that maybe the Sheboygan ordinance Excuse that is me, Joanne, stricter. Would you, would you like your additional minute? Yes, please. Move to approve. Might Second. be what you would need to do. Um, why start? Why continue? Why smoke at all? It's not cool. Um, it doesn't help anyone. As far as the noise that happens outside of the bars, I've been reading about that in the press. Um, I think police have been being called because of the noise complaints. This is probably going to happen inside the bars as well, given the clientele that goes to a lot of the bars. And it, it still is a free country that we still have the great outdoors to smoke in. Um, my parents 
never allowed anyone to smoke in, a, in, their, in their home, never. People would come over for family reunions or whatever, friends, they smoked outside. Whether it was 20 below, 50 degrees, 85 degrees, they smoked outside. Um, smoking is just causes yellow teeth, bad smelling hair and clothes, and it's just not a good idea. So tavern owners, please do the right thing and make sure there's plenty of open space, open air space. Joanne? Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Joanne. Next. Uh, next on the list will be Delcy Johnson. Delcy, can I have your home address, please? 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. Thank you, and you will have five minutes. Mayor Ryan, City Clerk Richards, City Attorney McLean, Aldermen and Citizens. I would like to talk with you about documents 42 and 43 on tonight's agenda, which deal with purchasing audiovisual equipment for the council chambers. When I spoke at the public forum two weeks ago, I talked about the need for greater transparency in informing the citizenry of the issues before the council. On May 23rd, the Finance Committee approved the purchase of audiovisual equipment for $18,000, which would allow for a paperless council. Alderman Hammond was quoted in the press story as saying that this technology would present full information for all agenda items on the city website and get everybody, give everybody who is viewing from home the opportunity to see exactly what the council is talking about. I am a strong conservationist, an avid recycler, and a green supporter, but I did not understand the logistics of the proposed system. So I went to City Hall last Tuesday morning and spoke with David Augustin, the new IT manager. He was not able to answer my questions and asked that I submit them in writing, which I did at noon last Tuesday. As of 6 p.m. today, I have not had an answer. Last Tuesday, I also called six aldermen, including the entire finance committee. Four aldermen returned my call, but none of them could answer my questions either. <clears throat> I asked Mr. Augustin how the consent agenda items would be handled. There were 25 items on the consent agenda at the May 16th meeting. My question was, would all 25 documents be displayed on the proposed two screens simultaneously? And if so, how would anyone be able to read and absorb 25 documents in the short time it takes for the council to dispose of those documents? Or, if they would be displayed for a longer period of time, how did the council meeting proceed? I asked the same questions about documents 29 to 40 on the May 16th agenda that were referred to various committees. How long would those documents be displayed? Would the television audience be expected to read, absorb the contents of those 12 documents, and note the committee it was referred to in the time it takes Mayor Ryan to say documents 29 to 40 to be referred? it would be impossible for even a speed reader to accomplish this. Again, <clears throat> if the documents would be displayed for a longer period of time, how would the council meeting proceed? Currently, although the minutes of the council and committee meetings are retained on the city's website, the agendas disappear when a new agenda is printed. Would citizens be able to go to the city clerk's office and get copies of agendas and documents, or would they only be available by computer? I also asked Mr. Augustin what the cost savings would be compared to the current system of printing, collating, and stapling the agenda and documents. How long would it take to scan the agenda and all the documents into the computer? Evidently, this is a separate process from creating the documents for the council, because in the past, when I had requested a document via computer, it was not available by email because it had not yet been scanned. Mr. Amodio was quoted in the press as saying, the larger cost is the people. What would be the cost and time savings for the staff? If, as indicated in the press story, this system is intended to inform the public, you want, might want to check out how well the information will be received by those in TV land. I watched a portion of the Government Accountability Board hearing on Wisconsin Eye on cable last week. The camera zoomed in on a chart with about 12 lines of information, which even though it took up the whole screen, was not readable. Granted, I do not have a 
two-inch television. But it caused me to wonder what font size documents would have to be in to be read by the public on their TVs. Also, I was told that with the paperless system, the only thing the TV viewers would see during a council meeting would be the two screens with the agenda items. The viewers would hear but not see the alderman conducting business as presently. It would be akin to reading the newspaper and listening to the radio at the same time. <clears throat> I encourage the greatest possible transparency in keeping the public informed about issues before the council, and I look forward to learning how the proposed paperless system would work. I hope that the council will not move forward with this idea until it has the answers. I was told that the city received only one bid for the proposed equipment, but that two other companies might be interested in participating. Perhaps it would be best to see what other companies have to offer before signing on with a lone bidder. I understand that the $18,000 would come from the cable TV fund. Excuse me, I don't know. <clears throat> would you like your extra minute? A few seconds. Yes, I don't know if that is considered free money, but I would still hope that you would know how or if the system would or would not work before spending the $18,000. Thank you. Thank you, Dulcie. Thank you, Dulcie. Thank you, Dulcie. Next. Okay. That's all? Yes. Okay, those uh, two items do lie over until next council meeting that uh, uh, Mrs. Johnson was discussing there, so possibly we can get some clarity before next council meeting. Okay, um, we are now looking uh, for a tourism update from our folks uh, from the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce, also known as the City of Sheboygan Tourism. Amy Wilson. I still don't understand the name change, but it's none of my business. And, and George Tuig. <laughs> As I never asked. You could put it on one of the desks if you want. It's going well so far. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Oh. <laughs> hey, that's better, George. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. Jim. You five minutes, right? Do you also have all of these slides on a packet in front of you? Um, this information actually came out in May during Tourism Week. It's the research from 2010, or the main points of it anyway, that's released by the Wisconsin State Department of Tourism each year for the prior year. They do hire a um, independent research company every year to um, tell us where the standings are for the counties. And so we can move forward. So in 2010, Sheboygan County maintained its position as the ninth-ranked tourism destination in the state of Wisconsin and the fourth-ranked tourism destination along the Lake Michigan shoreline. These are exact same positions that they held in 2009 as well. So the next page actually shows you the rankings of the top nine counties in the state. You'll see Sheboygan at number nine um, in the red. One thing to note here is that in 2009, our numbers were reported as 287 million. But when they did the research for 2010, if they find out variables that they weren't aware of the prior year doing the research, they recalculate that number. So our revised number for 2009 was that our actual tourism dollars were 277 million. Um, and those types of variables, we're not sure exactly what they are. They don't give us that information, but that could be a hotel not reporting on time or not reporting collect correctly or a different type of audit that's done and corrected. So it could be just about anything that makes them revise those numbers. If you look, every county in the state ends up with the revised number. 
So for 2010, on the model they're used, they used in 2010, our total tourism dollars in Sheboygan County were $294.3 million. Now according to the revised number, that's a 6.11% increase over the prior year. So that's a pretty nice increase for us. Of course, that number was revised down. Before it was revised down, it still would have been a 2.53% increase for us. And just to make note, all of the um, counties in yellow do have gaming, so we are ranking higher in the top nine than one of the uh, counties with gaming. Now, and just, just to give you a, a glimpse of what's going to happen in the future, Door County in particular is a test county for a brand new model that the state will probably start using. And so we see how much their number was revised down. The new model is actually statistically more accurate and a new company is doing it. And basically the major difference is, is they look at a lot more variables and they look into them deeper than the research company that had been doing the research in the past. So this is um, the uh, Lakeshore counties, all of those along the I-43 corridor, including Brown County. Um, so on that line, Sheboygan ranks number four. Now this is really important, obviously, because uh, we're lagging behind Milwaukee and Brown County, which is always going to be the case, um, just simply because of the, uh, the brewers and the packers and the, the larger city metro areas and larger convention centers that they've got. Um, we're slightly behind Door County, um, and we'll see how, that, how we rank next to Door County with the uh, new model next year, for sure, because that will be the model that they'll be using. Um, but we basically held our spot overall over the last year. The only two counties that changed spots just slightly were Racine and Kenosha. So Sheboygan County captures approximately 2.39% of total state traveler expenditure market share. So in 2010, the whole state of Wisconsin pulled in about $12.3 million in tourism expenditures. Now if we average that out through all of the state, all of the counties in the state, to be equalized, each county would have to bring in $170.8 million. A market share point is worth in the entire state 123 million. Now along the I-43 corridor, all of those counties, we captured almost 3.5 million dollars, or billion dollars, I'm sorry, 3.5 billion dollars in tourism expenditures, or more than 28% of the total tourism expenditures for the entire state. So we're right, of course, as we've always known, right on in the middle of the hot spot for the state. Um, the, if we just took those counties along the I-43 corridor from the, the south, southern part of the state through the northern part of the state and averaged it out, each county would have to bring in at least $388 million on average to hit that $3.5 billion mark. So one market share point along the I-43 corridor is worth $34 million, almost $35 million. So in 2009, we look at the revised number the state gives us, which is $277.3 million in tourism expenditures, 210 um, for that year, we did over $294 million. So the difference is almost a $17 million increase or a 6.11% change. Now the Sheboygan waterfront brings in roughly 7% of total county traveler expenditures during peak season. And the, the estimates for one seasonal dur duration in general are Memorial Day weekend through Labor Day weekend, unless there was a longer shoulder season that was considered to come to the number that helped us arrive at the 8.7 million. And what that means, of course, is the boats are dropped in the water a little bit earlier. If we get a nice fall, they stay in a little longer. So we try to capture that as well. So we know that in about that 12, 13 week peak season, our waterfront is worth about $8.7 million in economic impact for tourism. So these are the traveler expenditures by quarter for the county. 
Um, no big surprises here. And these are not, they don't go by a calendar year. The first quarter of a tourism season is December through February. We bring in over 36 million in tourism expenditures during that time, or about 12% of our year. March through May is almost 58 million, or about 20% of our year. June through August, our peak season, we bring in more than 127 million, or about 43% of our year. And September through November, it's a little over 73 million, or about one quarter of our year. Now, right now, we don't believe yet that we've tapped the June through August um, peak. We don't really think that we've captured everything we could. We're in our first year of our marketing campaign. Actually, we're in about the first eight weeks of the first year of a marketing campaign. So we, we think that we're going to keep right now, the goal is with the budget is to keep pounding on that June through August because there's still a lot of market share where we sit along the lakeshore that we believe we can capture. And you can see the um, waterfront brings in about 8.7 million or 7% of our peak season. And I think we went the wrong way. Ah, and now the campaign. And this is where I will let George speak to you about the new campaign. How do you <coughs> Not used to microphones, so excuse me for a second. Um, bouncing into the new campaign, you guys have probably heard or at least seen out there, or I hope you've heard. Um, we're lo we've launched a How Do You <coughs> Sheboygan campaign. Um, part of what our research has shown us, and actually the state's research as well, is that travelers and uh, especially those coming to Wisconsin are really trying to come up here looking for something fun. Um, so we've been trying to center in on having people, people picture themselves doing the different activities and things you can do here in the Sheboygan and Sheboygan County area. Um, what you'll see on the screen here are a number of billboards we're presently running from between Chicago up to about uh, Sheboygan. Uh, the larger ones, which would be on the right-hand side of the screen or, or your left, are all static billboards or your traditional billboards. Uh, the smaller ones over here are being used as uh, electronic billboards, so those change out, and those are mainly running through the Milwaukee market coming up. So if you get a chance to drive through, you'll, you'll see them um, rotating with about eight, different, eight other different billboards. Additionally, here are some examples of some of the print advertising we're running. Uh, over on the, uh, the far side over there, that's, that's an ad that's running in Chicago Magazine. That's one of our more general picture ads that's trying to capture all the different elements of Sheboygan. Here, uh, closer to me, is more targeted. That's running in one of the uh, athletic competition magazines, actually, and actually pushes out more of the outdoor athletic sports and competitions that Sheboygan holds. So throughout our, we have some more general advertising that we're doing in print, and also have some really niche targeted ones that are, are highlighting some of the things that we're very strong in. And you'll again see some of the even more targeted one uh, farther away. That basically is just pushing fishing. Um, it's in one of the, I believe it's tournament fishing times that's going throughout the state uh, to show people uh, what they can do here as well as fishing. And here you'll see some of our push for the upcoming Nations Cup that's going through some of the sailing magazines. Again, hitting those niche target markets because we get the best response off of them. All of the ads that we're doing um, and a lot of the effort we're doing through social media pushes everyone back to our new website, um, which launched, what, about two, three months ago? Yeah, it's March. Um, this generally is a much more robust, carries lots of videos, click-throughs to all the different entities in the area. If you guys haven't had a chance to play around and look, uh, I'd recommend it. All of our marketing efforts are pushing traffic back to here, and that way we can, we can measure the effectiveness of it. Because when, when an ad launches in certain areas, you can see the peaks and say, looking at the sailing pages or looking at the fishing pages or those kind of things. So we're watching our response through this, which is one of the uh, better measurables out there. It's also broken up into a more designated areas. We play, eat, stay, meet, um, which are generally what travelers or tourists, leisure travelers and you know, corporate travelers the information they're looking for in visiting a site, so it's much more user-friendly. In addition to that, um, I'm sure you've seen our publications out that we put out this year. Uh, we took the visitor's guide and made it a spring, summer, and a fall, winter visitor's guide. Um, and those have been out since uh, for, quite, uh, for a little while now. In March, we launched the uh, Pure Pleasure magazine as well, which highlights our culinary and artistic offering here in the area. And that was uh, delivered through a targeted distribution through the Milwaukee and Chicago markets, trying to get the weekend travelers to come up and 
enjoy our restaurants and check out our artistic offerings. Uh, and finally, we just recently fi finished up um, a culinary tour through the uh, State Department of Tourism, who actually uh, assisted in bringing um, almost 20 writers up to the up to Sheboygan County. They spent some time in Elkhart, some in Kohler, and finished up their tours here in uh, Sheboygan, where they saw everything we had from the high-end restaurants to enjoying a brat fry, just about everything Sheboygan had to offer. Um, and Stephanie Klett, the State Dis Department uh, Secretary uh, of, of Tourism, came up to assist with that. So that, that basically shows you where, where we are on that side of the campaign right now. Are there any questions? Oh, good. If I, if I could just make a comment, um, you know, I've, I've been privy to this information for a while because I work closely with tourism. Uh, the numbers that we experienced uh, in 2010 um, were not uh, due to the efforts of this team here. Uh, their, their campaign came out here this year, the new website, the new uh, billboard campaign. A lot of 2011 is what Amy and George have been working on. We owe a lot of our thanks in 2010 to Chad Pelashek, who filled in as tourism for the entire city. So I think Chad could be commended. Uh, on the other hand, um, I see much more professionalism in what we're doing here. Um, the publications that are being put out, and no offense, Chad, you're a planning guy. <laughs> That's not to me meant to be a dig at Chad. He's a planning guy. He's not a tourism person, okay? Chad, Chad's an economic development person. Uh, but what I see here in this, in this new campaign is, is a truly professional campaign done by professional staff that, is not, that are now working for the city. So I'm looking for uh, some, uh, some big numbers in 2011, and I believe that you guys will come through with those. Any questions from the council? Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Just a real quick question. Great information, some pretty neat stuff, but what do you see as one of the biggest weaknesses from our standpoint from a tourism? You know, things that we can do. Um, actually, we know exactly what that is, and it's our meeting space. And not that, I mean, we have adequate meeting space for some of the um, smaller meetings in the state. But really, Madison, Milwaukee, and Green Bay, even Lake Geneva, own that larger meeting space market. So meetings and the ability to have breakouts, we have more hotel rooms than our meeting space actually accommodates. Uh, another thing that we're lacking in here as far as tourism is shopping, correct? Oh, act for the leisure traveler, yes. There's different markets, so you always... But definitely, the retail end is where we're fairly weak, competing with counties that are very similar to us in the meeting space situation, we have less shopping. You know, those met in Dane County, Milwaukee County, Brown County, or Green Bay, they all have airports that people can fly into. Is that an issue that we don't have a, a functional airport from a general it, or public it, standpoint? Well, it could be if we were looking at um, more urban regional or national conventions or conferences but really when you're looking at a resort destination which is what we are you're you're looking at more of those in-state um, meetings and associations for their retreat strategies and planning sessions and the airport isn't quite as important then because they're usually drivable thank you any other questions alderman Bourne? no not on that subject anybody else Thank you. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I would like to request on follow-up to uh, Dulcie Johnson's comments. I understand uh, City Clerk Richards mentioned that we may be having a committee of the whole meeting next week to go over some of the redistricting things. And I'm wondering if it would, uh, in order to answer some of her concerns, and some I've gotten calls from other people besides Dulcie on this, if our IT director could give us, uh, I don't know if you wanted to call it a dog and pony show, but at least go over what the, uh, what the advantages to this paperless system are going to be. And I want to balance that with the expenditure of $18,000. I'm in favor of going paperless, but I'm also sensitive to the uh, uh, things that Dulcie brought up tonight as far as transparency and how the public 
is going to be able to follow us in, in how we conduct our meetings. So if our IT director could get something together by next week when we have our committee of the whole meeting, maybe we could schedule a few minutes for him to come in. Seeing that these documents lie over, it would be a good chance for the council to see exactly how this is going to work. And probably that committee of the whole meeting may be on television. It would give the public a chance to uh, at least see how the meetings are going to run also. So I would appreciate it if we could do that next week. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Alderman Hanna, can you put that on the committee of the whole agenda? Absolutely. Very good. Thank you. Uh, can somebody flip off that air conditioner in the back, please? You can open the window if you're warm back there. Switch. Switch. He must, he must be an engineer. <laughs> You can open the windows if it's warm back there. We've got ours open up here. Okay, moving on. <coughs> uh, mayor's announcements, I will be brief on these this evening. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the aldermen that participated uh, in the neighborhood cleanups uh, and also in the uh, Memorial Day Parade. I know we all have other commitments in our lives, um, but we did, I think we only had a half a dozen aldermen that showed up for the Memorial Day Parade. I would like to see more participation. Uh, of course, we all have other commitments, but you know, but there's certain things on, that we should put on our agendas as leaders of this city: uh, Memorial Day Parade, uh, Fourth of July Parade, Brat Days Parade, uh, certain things, and also uh, neighborhood activities that happen in your districts. So, but I do appreciate those aldermen that did attend and uh, made a good showing for the Common Council. Uh, moving on, this is Bike and Walk to Work Week. Um, big deal. Uh, do we have a contest going with uh, we do. Manitowoc this year? Yes, yes we've, I... uh, we've managed to uh, put them in their place the last couple, three years, I believe. Can I... Uh, they've never, never stood a chance. I myself, believe it or not, I'm going to ride my bicycle tomorrow while it's 85 degrees out to work. <laughs> I can't promise I'll ride it to uh, my meetings elsewhere in the county area, but I will ride it to work. So, uh, Jean, would you like to speak on this? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Yes, it is Bike and Walk to Work Week. Uh, this morning we were at the commuter station in Fountain Park, and so we had a uh, served coffee to a few, several bikers who came and walkers who came as well. We do have that plaque on the wall, uh, Sheboygan County Public Employee Bike and Walk to Work Week Challenge. So between the city, the county, and the school district, uh, we've been going for the last three years. So we're looking for four years in a row, everybody. So. Uh, Put your walking shoes on and get your bike out and, and uh, once or twice, if you can bike to a meeting or, or bike to work, uh, it would greatly help. So uh, yeah, like I said, we're looking to hang on to that, uh, that challenge, uh, that trophy on the wall. So. Okay, thank okay. you, Jean. Thank you. Uh, elsewhere, uh, there will be a second meeting of the Erie Hill neighborhood uh, to get the neighborhood association off the ground. Uh, that meeting will be if I can find it on uh, this Saturday, June 11th. And that will take place at uh, Restoring the Fallen Church uh, at 1431 St. Clair, 14th and St. Clair. Time is from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m., uh, especially for those aldermen involved in, uh, in uh, the Erie uh, Hill neighborhood or adjoining districts, it would be a good idea to attend. And also for residents of the Erie Hill neighborhood. Uh, that we get this neighborhood asso association off the ground. The Gateway Neighborhood Association is running strong. So it's very important that we participate in these and, uh, and, and get some good solid uh, neighborhood uh, leadership going. Okay, now um, the city is completing a three and a half million dollar project at the wastewater treatment plant to renovate the biosolids handling and treatment. Part of the project is an additional generator to convert biogas to electricity, also known as the methane turbines. Uh, Sheboygan has been a leader in utilizing this renewable resource. Uh, we have to thank a couple of uh, 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 groups here. Uh, funding for this project is aided by a grant, grant from Focus on Energy. And I would ask if we can have uh, Mr. Joe Cantwell and Dale Dorr, our uh, plant superintendent, uh, for, for our uh, wastewater treatment plant come up and say a few words. Good 
We can probably pull that podium out a little. That's right. You can, I can use this. You find that, sir? Sure. Okay. okay. Yes, Focus on Energy would like to uh, congratulate the Sheboygan Regional Wastewater Treatment Facility in receiving the grant, to, uh, a little bit over $205,000 towards the utilization of the biogas at the wastewater facility in, in generating power and heat uh, for the renewable energy program. Sheboygan should take pride in the work that the uh, wastewater facility has completed over the past couple of years of taking the initiative of using the program for some of the energy efficiency that they have done at the facility, uh, lowered its energy consumption. I think Dale has indicated by uh, in an area of 15%. And then initiate other projects such as the, the use of renewable energy uh, to generate sufficient electricity actually to take the plant off of uh, off the grid, if you wish to say, or it can self-sustain itself and has done that periodically and in the near future, hopefully longer than that. This goal is uh, becoming energy self-sufficient is being talked about by many national wastewater organizations and by other wastewater facilities. However, Sheboygan has gone farther than that. They are actually doing it and quite frankly uh, is nationally recognized for its effort in becoming energy efficient and generating enough power on itself uh, from the biogas. There are a few wastewater uh, treatment facilities internationally that can do it, but uh, very few even nation uh, nationally or in the United States. So it is quite an effort that, that has gone on. So again, Sheboygan should be proud of the energy efficiency and renewable energy projects developed, implemented, and now being operated at the treatment facility. Uh, and again, it is a leader both nationally and internationally in that area. And uh, please take recognition of that. Thank you, Mr. Cantwell. Dale, would you like to say a couple words? <laughs> he was supposed to put my name on that check. <laughs> Everything that we've accomplished at the wastewater treatment plan is because the city has allowed me to guide the ship down there and, and the projects we've done uh, to reduce our energy. As Joe said, we reduced our energy consumption by 17.5%. That's a million kilowatts a year. Uh, we, uh, uh, I didn't prepare a speech, so I don't know what that's, I'm supposed to I, say. That's okay, I never do. <laughs> <laughs> but everything we've done down there is to become more self-sufficient. And as Joe said, there, there's, uh, from what I'm aware of, there's one uh, treatment plant in Europe that produces 100% of its energy on site and uh, as a secondary treatment facility, meaning we have one similar to ours uh, and there's, there's not any in the United States at this point. About a month ago, uh, over the weekend, we were producing 115% of our electrical energy on site, which means the meter was turning backwards. And because of that, the, the rate payers will see lower rates in the years to come. Uh, part of this grant here uh, helped pay for that project. The co-generation portion of the project was about a million and a half. Uh, dollars and uh, I thank Focus on Energy for coming through and it's a statewide program. We've actually we probably received about 400,000 from Focus on Energy over the years on, on the different projects we've done. So thank you. Thank you, Dale. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, another key part of the uh, of, of uh, this uh, uh, project is a low interest loan that we received from Alliant Energy and we have Laura Gum, our uh, local Alliant representative that would like to come up and say a few words about that. We got the big one. <laughs> I wasn't told I was going to have to speak, so I'm going to make this short and sweet. I'm a key account manager with Alliant Energy, and I've been working with Dale on projects at the wastewater treatment plant for about six years. Dale is really a trendsetter. He's done a lot of great things out there. You can be very proud of him. He's not afraid to step out of his comfort zone and try some new things. He's saving a lot of energy. Who knew you could take methane? It, you know, it's stinky, but it's great because it's making electricity. Um, we're, we're proud to give this this shared savings loan to the city of Sheboygan. The city's been a great partner for Alliant Energy. We've done quite a few projects with the city. This comes at a 2% 2 administrative fee, which is very reasonable. 
Um, it's part of our conservation fund. It's still available. If there's any other projects the city would like to do to save energy, please let me know. And um, thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations again, Dale. Uh, as, as far as uh, leaders of this city go, uh, Dale, I think, is one of the brightest people that the city has ever had. So thank you. Okay, that will be all for the mayor's announcements. Uh, we do have a couple of hearings. We have two hearings. Uh, we will run them uh, concurrently. I believe we can, correct? Yes. Uh, number one, a hearing to amend the text of the City of Sheboygan Official Zoning Ordinance so as to permit junkyard or salvage yard as a conditional use within the UI Industrial District. And two, to amend the text of the City of Sheboygan Official Zoning Ordinance in Section 15.205, regulations ap applicable to all land uses so as to add 12 large-scale buildings. Is there anybody that would like to be heard at these hearings? Again, is there anybody wishing to be heard? And for the third time, is there anybody that wishes to be heard? President Rinfleisch? Thank you, Mayor. I move that we uh, close the hearings. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to close the hearings under discussion. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, hearing is closed. Consent agenda 5-1 through 5-22. President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I move that we accept and file all report of officers, accept and adopt all report of committees, and pass all resolutions. I believe there's one uh, from documents 5-1 to 5-22. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion on the consent agenda. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hanna? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kopp? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichuk? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Belt? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions. 523 and 524 to be referred. Reports of officers to 525 by the City Plan Commission annexing territory to the City of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, Shukert Farms, LLC. And General Ordinance Number 9-11-12 by Alderpersons Kathleen Kittleson annexing territory to the City of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, City Plan Commission, Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the uh, RO be uh, accepted and placed on file. And the ordinance. And the ordinance oh, be. And the ordinance. I move that the ordinance also be put upon its passage. Very good, Alderman Sampson. Do we have a second? Second. second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Carlson. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kath. Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manachek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of officers 2526 through 539 will be referred. Resolutions introduced 3, 540, through 543 will lie over. Uh, 540 uh, will lie over also with those. 540 through 543. 544 through 546 to be referred. Report of Committee 6. 547 by Law and Licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 7081 based upon his failure to include all relevant convictions on his application and his record of violations and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, is Mr. Joseph Mertens here? Is Mr. Mertens here? Is Mr. Mertens here? Uh, Mr. Mertens was uh, 
requested by our committee through certified letter to show up. He did not. Um, so I would uh, move that the RC be accepted and adopted, uh, denying his license. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Under discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hanna? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Cut? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. I'm sorry, Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Felt? Aye. Warren? Aye. And Carlson? Aye. 16 eyes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 8. 548 by finance executing a grant agreement with the Department of Natural Resources in the city of Sheboygan for the purpose of developing a conservation plan for 177 acres on the Shukert property. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Anna? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kass? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Matters laid over 11. 427 RO number 301112 by the City Plan Commission relative to amending the text of the City of Sheboygan official zoning ordinance so as to permit junkyard or salvage yard as a conditional use within the UI Urban Industrial District. Alderman Sampson. I'm sorry. I uh, 427. There we is. have uh, RO number 301112 and general ordinance number 1-1112. One uh, then I move that the uh, RO be accepted and placed on file and that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and place on file and put the ordinance upon its passage under discussion. President Rindfleisch. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, the question that I had was regarding this is why the change now is there a property in question uh, that uh, we're not seeing a particular address, or is this to clarify something that's in, already in existence? Um, just some information that the calls I had received is regarding that. Very People good. One in their backyard. So. Uh, Alderman Hanna, would you like to answer that? Yeah, this refer, refers to an existing property, um, and this ordinance really protects the investment they have in that property and allows them to add additional jobs to the city of Sheboygan. It's all positive, and they've been a great citizen. Answer your question. Is there any further discussion? There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. <clears throat> Heideman? Aye. Kass? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manichak? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Bor I'm sorry, Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 16. Motion carries 428 RO number 311112 by City Plan Commission relative to amending the text of the City of Sheboygan Official Zoning Ordinance in Section 15.205 regulations applicable to all land uses so as to add 12 large scale buildings and General Ordinance number 21112 by Alderman Sampson relative to amending the text of the City of Sheboygan Official Zoning Ordinance in Section 15.205 regulations applicable to all land uses so as to, as to add 12 large-scale buildings. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I again move that the RO be accepted and placed on file and that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. This, of course, applies to the same property. <clears throat> there is no discussion. Roll call, please. Cuff. Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 447 resolution number 1811-12 by Alderman Hammond, Alder Persons, Hammond, Rindfleisch, Boren, Matichek, and Van Akron authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2011 budget 
Establish revenue and appropriation for donations to the police department for community policing, donations for canine services, donation to the fire department for thermal imaging camera. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Matichak? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Koth? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 549. An RC by Marina and Harbor Committee recommending filing documents submitting the Harbor Center Marina balance sheet from operations dated March 31, 2011 as submitted by Skipper Marine. Um, Marina and Harbor. Alder, Alder, Alder Min Van Akron. Thank you, go. Mr. Mayor. I uh, move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion to accept and adopt and a second under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call please. We can do no oh, There's no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion, motion carries. Uh, 550, an RO by the city clerk submitting a claim from AT&T for alleged damages to their buried telephone cable while the city was excavating for a water service will be, con will be referred to risk management. And uh, 551, an RO by the city clerk granting various licenses, law and licensing. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the uh, RO be accepted and placed on file. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and place on file. <coughs> Under discussion? Otherwise. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> 5-52 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from the state of Wisconsin Department of Corrections submitting a request for a waiver of the sex offender residency restriction on behalf of Anthony Mosta. They're requesting to move him to the TLP at 931A Michigan Avenue. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 553 is a resolution authorizing execution of the buyout provision and the renewable electrical generation agreement with Wisconsin Power and Light Company. Will be referred to finance. 5-54 is an RO by the city clerk submitting the tentative map for re, uh, redistricting for the city of Sheboygan. That will be referred to committee of the whole and aldermen you all received your maps this evening. 5-55 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2012 and June 30, 2013. Will be referred to law and licensing. 5-56 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2012 and June 30, 2013. Also to law and licensing. 557 is an ordinance creating subsection 2-112A4 of the municipal code relating to times of council meetings so as to set the time for the July 5, 2011 council meeting at 5.30 p.m. That lies over. 558 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Sylvia Saldana about trouble she is having with a certain bus driver. Will be referred to transit. That is all for other matters. Move to adjourn. Second. We have a motion to adjourn and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Kevin, I need you to sign something.